welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. My name is Sammy Veltry, and on this channel we do DIYs, wood signs, there's tons of lofters, we do upcycles, and it's always a good time. So if that's something you're into, then make sure to stick around. Today I have the privilege of working with Brie from Upcycled by Brie, so I can't wait to share her channel with you, and I cannot wait to share all of these upcycles with you. So let's go ahead and get going. All right, you guys. So this one, I actually have been collecting tons of rolling pins and I have not done anything with them yet. I always find them for usually $2.99, like all the ones. I was even nice enough and I found three of these and I gave one to Brie. That's how nice I am, you guys. Yep. All right, so let's get started with this one. Okay, so I knew I had this tissue paper from last year, Dollar Tree, and I was so happy I found it. So I've seen this done with like rub on transfers. I've seen it done with scrapbook paper and y'all know I love my tissue paper. So I was like, I'm busting out the tissue paper. I couldn't believe I found this by the way. And um, I wanted to try to do it with the rolling pin. So I am going to grab my Dollar Tree Mod Podge. I love the little squeezy Mod Podge. It's so convenient. And we're going to go ahead and start in smaller sections on this rolling pin. Now, y'all know tissue paper is very, very thin. So the thing with this is I always go through and I pat it down right here. I thought I could roll it and I thought I was like all smart. Well, it didn't. You, you can't. So most of the time I pat it down. You'll see me. I just get like my palm. I pat it. There you go. Pat it, pat it, pat it. Well, then I don't know what happened. I think I blacked out, but then I started rubbing it and I know not to rub the tissue paper. Well, here I go putting it down and then I decide to rub it with my finger. Oh, there you go. And it rips. And these are the moments you guys while crafting where you're like, you could either get upset by it and start all over again, or you can just go with the flow. And I went with the flow. I'm like, it is what it is. Let's make it look distressed. Let's make it look like it's been in Noni's kitchen for years and years. And this print is just kind of wearing off our rolling pin. So then I go through and I just rub more sections off so that it looks cohesive and looks like it's meant to be instead of having just one hole there. Then I'm going to close this off. Now try not to put too much of the tissue paper overlapping because then the tissue paper gets darker in that overlapping area and it, you'll see the seam and it doesn't look that great. So I'm going to go ahead and I hit this with my heat gun here and dry that up. Then I'm going to take my 220 grit sandpaper. I'm going to go in downward motions at the end of the, I was going to call this a spinning wheel, uh, but it's not. And then I go over the entire thing. And this is because those, the sections that I like rubbed off kind of bunched up. So this is going to smooth it completely down. And it also just makes the tissue paper look more a part of the rolling pin versus looking like I just glued it on. So now here's the blob. Okay, this is Crimson by Waverly. I'm gonna take a stencil brush from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna go ahead and just do a messy coat on this to make it look like distressed handles. Now, the reason I didn't paint it and then sand it was because I find that whenever you do that with red paint, it ends up looking pink. I don't know, Do you, should I clear it first and then distress it? and then it won't do that, or do you guys have any tips or tricks for that? So after we're done, I just go ahead and I let that dry. I coat it with some clear wax, and we are done here. And look at how cute, like yeah, it, it tore off right there. I'm not trying to hide it at all, and I, I like it. It looks worn just like the handles do, and I think it'll be a great decorative piece for the kitchen this holiday season. So make sure you're going to your local thrift stores. $2.99 is a steal. All right, y'all. I hope you like that first upcycle. I was totally feeling the Christmas spirit when I was thinking of these DIYs. And I think it's maybe because I found so many kind of like Christmas inspired things while Brie and I went thrifting this weekend. And in case you didn't catch that, make sure you are following me on Instagram at Unicorn Dust Designs. The link is down in the description box. Bree and I got the opportunity to meet up this past weekend and we got to go thrifting together. We did some serious damage. We completely filled 
the entire back of my Suburban and the middle row of my Suburban. So we got a lot of stuff. So I cannot wait for you to see what I come up with. We also had a mystery item, um, which is going to be in this video. So stay tuned so you can find out what that is. And I also gave a mystery item to Brie as well. I'm gonna leave Brie's channel down in the description box for you. I'll link her channel and today's video so you could head over there and check it out. You guys will absolutely love her. Her and I vibe like so well. So if you dig me, you'll probably dig her. And y'all know the drill. If you're digging me, if you're digging the channel, if you're digging the DIYs, please make sure to like, make sure to subscribe and let's get on with these upcycles. All right, y'all, we're gonna go ahead and start off with these two pieces. So this was my mystery item that Brie gave me. And if y'all watch Brie, you know, she's obsessed with bunt pants and I, saw this and was like, what the heck am I going to do with a bunt pan? I already made a pumpkin. So I was like, we're not doing that. And then I have this piece. So this was two, this was $3.99. And then I have this. I hauled quite a few of these at the Salvation Army quite a bit ago and they were $1.99 and then I got 50% off. So we're gonna use both of these and we are going to see what we can do. So let's get on with it. Okay. So I took both pieces out. I spray painted it the most perfect red and you guys humidity got the best of, of these pans. Okay. Just make sure you're spraying in good conditions because it did not work out. So, I mean, it's still distressed down, but it was getting kind of gummy on me when I was trying to use the sanding block um, because it was just so tacky from the humidity. So I still was able to sand it. I got just, I sanded down all of the ridges on this one. And then, um, I did, I should have probably sprayed it with clear first and then distressed it. Anywho, then I hit the bump pan and the bump pan, I think it was like a no stick one because it distressed so well. Sorry about the clicking clacking. That's, that's Hank pacing. And okay. So now after I do clear it with clear matte spray paint, I am marking the middle of what is going to be the top here. And then I'm going to take my drill and we are going to pre-drill a hole in the pan. And what I don't show is I pre-drill a hole in our spindle over here. Now, this is where it gets sketchy. Sorry guys. All I do is I screw the top piece into our spindle. But as I'm doing this and playing around with it, I realize it is way too unstable and you wouldn't be able to set anything on there. It would just wobble, wouldn't work. So I had to take it apart and then I take this wood round from Walmart. It's 97 cents. I paint it black. I just thought the spindle's black. It would look fine, better than just keeping a piece of raw wood. And after I'm done painting it black, I'm gonna use my Starbond. Starbond is amazing for um, adhering things to metal. Get my accelerator on there and it's stuck. It ain't going nowhere. So then I drill a hole again, right through that hole. And then we are gonna connect. So right here, you guys, I'm taking my spindle and I'm putting it in the hole that is in my bump pan. It's seriously, fit perfectly. Then I'm going to take my star bond and I'm going to coat the middle of the circle. You'll see right now. Sorry. This is, it was hard to film this. Um, I'm coating the middle. Then I'll put my spindle back through. I'm going to take a level. So I make sure that it's straight. Once that sets up, which it takes less than it takes about like 30 seconds for this glue to set up. I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to put some more star bond around my little bit of spindle that's sticking out. And you guys, this thing is so secure. It is not going nowhere. And look at how this turned out. I loved my mystery item that Brie gave me. I really didn't know what I was going to do with this bump pan, but I'm really excited she gave me it because it got me out of my comfort zone and uh, got me getting creative. So you guys, thrift stores don't miss out on your thrift stores okay here's another one found this at salvation army and it was 199 there was actually two of them but the other one was like severely cracked and this is why having a shopping partner is so amazing 
because I spotted these and I was like, $1.99, these are really nice. I was like, but what would I do with them? And right away, Brie was like, Christmas tree. And I was like, oh my gosh, that would be so beautiful. So let's go ahead and get started with it. For this beautiful piece, I decided to do crimson and the baking soda. Again, I'll, I'll explain 50-50, but if you guys want more of a texture, go with more baking soda. If you want less texture, less baking soda. So I'm taking my chippy brush. This is my favorite brush to apply uh, the faux cement paint. And whenever you're doing your first coat of paint, you're really just trying to coat the entire thing. No matter what, you're most likely going to have to do a second coat of this. I always make sure to get my bottoms too. I love a finished product. I don't want to leave the bottom blank and make it feel like an afterthought, you know? So I paint the entire thing with this. I do speed up the process of dry time with my heat gun. It works very well with the, um, with the faux cement paints. I don't have any issues with it. So I'm going to finish covering this up. Then we go in with a second coat. Now the second coat is where you're going to start kind of stippling it on and giving it that concrete finished look. Now, if you don't want the concrete look, you can simply put a second coat on it and just use even brush strokes and it'll give it a smoother finish and not so textured. So I'm gonna go around here. I'm gonna get in all of our little nooks and our crannies and I'm going to allow that to dry. Once again, it dries super fast. Sorry, I should have probably cut all of this painting down, but you know, I love for you guys to watch me paint because I know as someone that watches YouTube, it, it just brings me so much happiness. Can you hear the sarcasm in my voice? Okay, so now I'm taking the white wax by DIY. Now I wanted to show you this because at first I apply it, then I wipe it down. Then I take this grit powder by um, Sweet Pickens and I put it in there and I'm like, oh no, 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 that doesn't look right. It doesn't look right. It ended up looking muddy and gray. That's not what your girl was going for. So then I try again. I take the DIY white wax and I brush it on. Then I take the grit. So the grit is a way to make it look like it's dirty and aged and let me tell you, it does the job and I am beyond excited about this product. Upcycled by Breed.com has all of these items and I will list them in the description box for you. So as you can see, as I'm hitting it, you can see those little gray pieces in there. I'll give you a closer up, of course, at the end, but I just continue to go through with this white wax. I dip my brush into the grit and then just kind of put it on spots where maybe like dirt would naturally settle into the details, into those lines on the side right there. And I'm just gonna continue this all the way around. And then what else do I do? Maybe this is why my video is so long because like I didn't edit this, this one very, very well. So hi you guys, you could listen to me talk while painting, uh, but seriously, UpcycledByBree.com, this is where the DIY white wax is. The grit is on there too. So many products she sent me that I'm, I'm trying out and I'm absolutely loving. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys this. This seriously was probably took the longest time out of all the DIYs I made today. But this is the Dollar Tree Christmas tree. And I just wanted to show you that a way to get a fuller Christmas tree is by stacking two of the trees together. So I just move all the branches to the side. I'll lay them on top of each other and then I will get my zip ties. It would have been perfect with the black zip ties, but they didn't fit. So I'm going to put one in on the bottom, the middle and the top. Then I'll go ahead. I'll fan out all of my leaves, blah, blah, blah. And then to cover those zip ties and the poles in the middle, because you could see them, I take these pine singles that you also get at Dollar Tree and I will wrap that around those poles. And that way it makes your tree look fuller. It makes it look a little bit more higher end. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and just decorate this up off of camera. And this is what we come up with. I think this is so pretty. I would have personally never thought to use this vessel as something to hold a Christmas tree. And do you see the grit? Do you see how it looks like I found this? maybe like in someone's barn on the floor and it got dirty and it's aged with time. And I love the look of that. I absolutely love it. Let me know what you think. Okay, you guys, this is another one. So Brie actually found this one. She set it down. So uh, I swooped it up. It was $4.99 and I was like, why not? It actually looks like it's a repurposed cabinet door that somebody made. And then it's already painted white. It already has like these cast iron hooks on here, which are so awesome. So this is gonna be a super simple upcycle. So let's get started. One of my amazing subscribers sent me a box full of napkins. And so I knew when I got this, I needed to use one of those and the images fit so well inside this cabinet door. So I'm gonna cut it out. I don't know how Amber Strong does it because she works with napkins and I felt like my lines were so uneven when I cut this. Anywho, I'm gonna go ahead and place that in there. I'm gonna size her on up here. It works pretty well. And then I do have to cut some of the bottom of the Christmas tree off, but it was fine. You could definitely see enough of it. Then we're gonna pull the two napkins apart. You can definitely leave the two plies on um but it just i think it kind of looks nicer with the one ply it is a lot thinner though so be careful for that so that i'm all trying to be neat like oh i'm gonna tuck these in and then i'll put a little bit of mod podge and just fold it back down girl you wish okay uh i have to take it off this is when i realize no 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 <laughs> so again we're gonna get the mod podge I'm going to start with a little bit at a time. I feel that doing a little bit at a time with Mod Podge really helps kind of control the piece, I guess you can say, and makes less bubbles for me. Now I know there's tons of ways y'all how to apply Mod Podge. I've, I've seen them in comments and I know you guys are probably going to tell me anyways in comments. So thanks for their tips, but this is just the way I like doing it. It works for me. I don't mind if there's wrinkles. Um, I think you, Anybody that watches my videos knows I'm not like neat and all that. Like I like the rustic look. I like it not looking store-bought or, you know, you, you're picking up what I'm putting down, you guys. Okay. So we lay that. It was so funny. Bree said, oh my gosh, it's so crazy to hear you say those things in person. I thought that was pretty funny. So I'm going to pat this down. I am going to heat it up with, I heat it up, dry it off with my heat gun. Dry it off try it. Yeah, whatever. Um, and then we are going to put a second coat. So I am probably going to put this piece in my booth. Um, and I mean, you guys, it's a napkin. So I would just put a protective coat over the top either way. It'll last longer. You won't have to worry about somebody scratching it or the paper falling apart. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then again, I just speed up the drying process with my heat gun, which takes probably a minute to do. After that dries down, look at those, the iron like hooks. It just all, it worked out so well. All right. Now that that's when my whole lighting unit fell on top of my head. Yeah. I have a nice big bump because that thing is humongous. Okay. So now this star that's on here is also kind of like an iron star that they put on whoever made this and it was kind of lifted. So I was able to stick some uh, tape underneath there. Now I'm taking this green chalk paint that plaid sent me. I want to say it's called evergreen. I could be our vintage. It's called vintage green. And for whatever, I think I didn't shake it enough because it was super thin, almost like acrylic paint. When I put it on, I ended up having to do three coats to get the coverage that I wanted to get. Oh, and then I don't show you guys, but I do dry this down and then I do sand the tops of the star down so that the white comes peeking through. Sorry, I didn't record that. But this is how it turned out. And you guys can do this with anything, the tissue paper, napkins, or you guys could even just put like a decal or something in the middle. I love working with cabinet doors and I can't believe I found this for $4.99 and everything was basically already done for me. 
this is the last one. We, I found this. It was $2.99 at Savers. Looks like it was originally a Michaels. Came from Michaels for $12.99. So we are, it's actually pretty cute the way it is, but I feel like the green is too, I don't know, like witch green. I don't know. Let's go ahead and change it up just a tad bit. All right, you guys. I just wanted to show you this because I took the bottom sticker off and look at what the color used to be. Doesn't that blow your mind? I wonder how old this is. Not too old. It's from Michaels. But anywho, so I'm going to take that same green. I shook it up really good and this time it went on really dark and the way chalk paint should be. Now, you're probably like, why are you putting green on green? Well, I didn't like that bright green. I, it just, it wasn't working for me. So that is why I chose to use this darker green. I'm just using a chip brush to get through all, all those details on there, the holly, the berries. I do put on two coats on the outside, one coat on the inside. And once that is all dried and done, then I go in with my sandpaper, my 220 grit sandpaper. Now I will say you guys, I sanded this down. I wanted to be able to see all those details of course. Now when I went outside and sprayed it with the clear Rust-Oleum and brought it back inside, all of the distressing I did went away. So I advise clear it first, then bring it back in and de-stress it. It was really weird, but I love how all of like the holly and the berries, all of those fine details are peeking through on this pan here. Um, look at even like the handles. I like it. I know it's simple. I know you guys are like, oh, but I like it. And I love when I can find some embossed metal pieces at the local thrift store because they look absolutely stunning once you just dress them down. So after this, you guys, I go into the garage, I cut down some spindles to make some legs. I thought this would just add the little bit of detail that it needed. I'm gonna use that same green chalk paint. I'm gonna do a messy coat on the legs. And then of course I do the bottom of the legs because I like it looking finished. I like if somebody lifted this up to move it or something, they would see that the bottom was painted and not raw. I don't know, is that just me? Anyways. Anywho, so after we do that, so you guys, Julie Signs and Design, she uses this Gorilla Glue, so I was like, you know what, I'll try it. You guys, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. It takes way too long to dry. I am a very impatient person. So going forward, I will, I will personally stick with my Star Bomb because it dries within like 30 seconds to a minute. Um, yeah, th this took forever to dry, but this is how it turned out, you guys. Um, it's, it's a lot darker than what my camera is showing, but I love that you can see all these little details. I love the addition of the little mini legs. And thank you guys for joining me. Make sure to check Upcycled by Bree's channel. I will link it down in the description box along with her website for any of the paint goodies I used from there. And I hope you guys have an amazing week. Make sure to come back on Thursday. I am trying to get ready. Yes. So this is mom's, okay? Okay, see, see, see what's happening here? No, okay, see what's happening here? No. Get your head out of there, honey. Here I be trying to look all cute. <laughs> I don't know what these are. I see other people doing it. So I'm like, I'm gonna be a cool mom. Try okay. If only I could get the lighting to work, got these humongo lights, and I still have to change the lighting on my actual camera. Hey everyone, what's up? It's Sammy from Unicorn Desk Designs. We do okay. hanging by a paper okay I think you're done I think you're done I want to do what everybody else does and I want to mix it with water 
I want to put some water in there so we have some like you know a stain and I figured this thing was on its last leg so why not all right I need to get into these yeah bye